nature has been an um, inspiration for us to develop these uh, disensitized cells. Uh, the uh, disensitized solar cell is the only solar cell that mimics the charge separation process in photosynthesis. It uses, like in the green leaf, it uses a molecule that is excited by sunlight and generates electric charges, but the molecule is not involved in the charge conduction. So the charge transport and the photoinduced charge separation are separated. And that's not the case for all the other solar cells that are based on PN junction semiconductors. The cell also uses the principle of <coughs> stacking. In, the, in uh, the green leaf, the cell stacks many thylakoid membranes so that the light will go through many monolayers of chlorophyll before it gets extinguished. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same trick we are using. Instead of piling uh, uh, the uh, thylakoids, we, we are using uh, Nano, nanometer sized titanium particles that are piled up, uh, stacked up, and that achieve the light harvesting. That's a critical, very critical part of our invention to have those uh, mesoscopic or nanocrystalline oxides that are stacked up and allow for the first time to harvest light efficiently and also to generate electric charges that can be captured. Well, as uh, the Dyson size solar cell is certainly a disruptive technology, and so uh, the first applications which we see now are in the uh, portable electronics, uh, making use of the very high efficiency in ambient light conditions of those cells. They are much better than competition in capturing ambient light and transforming it in, in electric power. It's also the light weight that is very attractive. And, uh, and the production which we see, for example, at G24 Innovation in, in, uh, in Wales is the first time that such a lightweight modules is made in a roll-to-roll -roll process and uh, at the megawatt scale. And this is now being commercialized. Now, uh, the next application, which are already being developed by companies like Dysol and Solaronics, uh, we see in the building integrated photovoltaics. Mm -hmm. Our cells are the only ones that can make facade windows that are translucent in different colors. Even you can realize a glass that is completely transparent, has no color, and produces electric power. So we see a, a huge potential there and that's being t t tackled now by, by several companies, several of our licensees. Mm -hmm. okay. The research was um, actually curiosity driven. We had been the first to develop uh, nanocrystals of uh, the white band, or a band gap semiconductor oxide, titanium dioxide. And we were testing uh, by laser studies the uh, sensitization of those small particles. And, and then comes, so, so we get very exciting results and, uh, on this uh, charge separation that was studied uh, in a fundamental research way on this small particles first. But it was mission-oriented research. And, and so, at, uh, so I had asked my student, uh, Hans de Silvestre, to, to perform an experiment with, with, with an electrode, a, a, a real solar cell. And, and the, the, the Eureka moment came when uh, he, he reported photocons back that were a thousand times higher than what other people had measured on the normal flat film configuration. That was the birth of the three-dimensional junctions. They're called bunk, bulk junction cells today. And this was the first bulk junction cell, and it showed the huge advantages of this, co this configuration against intuition, one would say, because very disordered structure, but it captures light very efficiently. And we got these huge photocons, thousand times higher than what the competition would measure on, on flat sensitized films. 
And so for a while, we had to travel around with our electrode and, and show our pairs that this was really true. It was not an artifact. This was a very exciting moment.